In example three, we have two masses that are suspended from a pulley. The larger mass is 25 kilograms and accelerates downwards at 2.5 meters per second squared. So the acceleration of this 25 kilogram mass is downwards. And we were asked to find the mass of the smaller block here on the right, which if the other one's accelerating downwards, it means this block must be accelerating upwards. So the rope, or the system is accelerating around the pulley in this counterclockwise direction. And this direction we want to consider to be the positive direction in the system because it's going to make all our math easier. When you can, try to make the acceleration that the system is going to be moving in the positive direction. So let's label mass 1 to be the 25 kilogram mass, which means our unknown mass, what we want to find to solve this problem, is going to be M2. The free body diagram for each of these, so I'll start with mass 1, it's pulled down with the force of gravity and it's pulled upwards because it's tied from the top to the rope which is around the pulley, the tension must be pulling it upwards. And if the system is accelerating downwards, that tension must be a little smaller than the force of gravity so that there's a net force downwards. We can also do a free body diagram for mass 2. It's a little smaller, so we know that the force of gravity must be less. But the tension has to be the same as the tension acting on mass 1, because these two tensions are coming from the same rope. So those tensions have to be equal. Now we know that this smaller block is accelerating upwards. It's lighter than mass 2, so the, the force of gravity has to be smaller than the force of gravity acting on mass 1, but it also has to be smaller than the tension so that the net force on mass 2 is upwards. Like we did in example 2, we're going to redraw the system without the pulley to make our lives easier. And we're going to see it gets a little tricky here. So mass 1 on the left, mass 2 on the right, they're tied together by this rope. And now our acceleration for the system is actually going to be the left. And as I said before, we want this to be our positive direction. So left being positive is a little weird, but as long as we're clear about it, it's totally okay. And it's going to make our life and our math easier, so it's something that we should do. So now the force of gravity, without the pulley involved, we're going to draw it to the left on mass 1. And on mass 2, the force of gravity, which is less than on mass 1, because it's a smaller block, is pulling backwards to the right. So this is our simplified view of the system, our simplified diagram without the pulley involved, so that we can see which forces exactly are competing against each other. And there's our tensions. Again, that's an internal force, so it's not going to show up in an F-net statement if we consider the system as a whole. And we want to consider the F-net statement for the system as a whole because we don't actually know anything about the tension and we're not asked to find anything about the tension. So knowing that in the, if we look at the Fnet system, Fnet of the whole system, that the tensions won't appear, chances are this is going to be a really good uh, uh, thing for us to consider so that we don't have to worry about them. If we're not asked for them and we're not given any information about them, let's try to avoid them if we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram now of the whole system. We have to be a little careful. We have FG to the right, FG2 I should say, and we have FG1 to the left. But there's no gravitational force or normal force because these masses aren't really sitting on this surface. It's really an imaginary surface just to help us visualize the forces that are acting against each other or with each other. You have to remember that these masses are really 
hanging by a rope. So there's no normal force because they're, they're not really, in reality, resting on a surface. So our F net statement is really going to be quite simple because we only have two forces to consider. There's no, as, as in our, in our uh, simplified system, there's no vertical forces. There's just these two competing forces, which are horizontal in our simplified diagram, but again, would be vertical if we went back to our real life diagram. So with this information in mind, I'm just going to redraw it. We need some room here to do our math. We have the force of gravity acting on mass 1 pulling to the left, and the force of gravity on mass 2 pulling to the right. We can go ahead and write an F net statement. The F net statement for this situation is Fg1 minus Fg2. Again, just to remind ourselves, the acceleration is to the left, and so that's the positive direction that we want to consider. So that means Fg1 is a positive force, and Fg2 is a negative force. So now we can go ahead, and because this is for the system as a whole, in our F net statement, Ma is the mass of the whole system times the acceleration, and then we have F, the force of gravity acting on mass 1 would be M1g minus the force of gravity acting on mass 2, which is M2g. The mass of the system, I'm going to rewrite that as just M1 plus M2. It's just the mass of everything that has mass in the system. So that we can see a little bit better where our unknown values are. And here's where we can see it. M2 is what we're trying to find in this problem and it's in two different places. Now, everything else in this problem is known to us. We know M1, we know the acceleration. Again, here comes M1 again, we know that. And of course, we know acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So with only one unknown value in this problem, we should be able to solve for it, although it will take a little bit of rearranging to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our known values in right off the bat, which should help make our lives easier. I'm going to do that here. So M1, which we know to be 25 kilograms plus M2, times the acceleration, which we know to be 2.5 meters per second squared, is equal to M1 is 25 kilograms times 9.8 minus m2 times 9.8. Now we can start to see how we're going to get m2. We're going to have to bring them together somehow. So I'm going to multiply this 2.5 into the brackets here on the left. So 2.5 times 25 gives me 62.5. 2.5 times m2 is just, just that, 2.5 times m2. If we don't know what M2 is, then that's as far as we can go. Now, 25 times 9.8 is 245 minus 9.8 M2. So I've simplified things a little bit, and I've expanded that multiplication on the left-hand side of the equation. And now we're very close to getting our M2s together so that we can solve for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 9.8 M2 to each side of this equation. And I'm also going to subtract 62.5 from each side of this equation so that I have 2.5 M2 plus 9.8 M2 is equal to 245 minus 62.5. These are like terms. They have the same variables. So we can add them together. That's 12.3 M2 on the left. And 245 minus 62.5 is something we can do. 182.5. And now we're simply one step away from solving this by dividing each side by 12.3. We isolate 
m2. So we get m2 is equal to 182.5 divided by 12.3, I'll round that to 14.8 kilograms. And that's our final answer.